this off. <laughs> 184 meters. So welcome back friends to a very cold and chilly day in the homestead. This is probably the last video that you'll see me in a t-shirt uh, until next summer. So uh, Mrs. W asked me a question yesterday. We were out uh, and she's like, why do you like your van so much? I'm always talking about it and fiddling around with it. And I said, you know, you know what I think I like about it is that I like that feeling of um, independence and self-sufficiency. Uh, because, you know, a perfect example, you know, we've, you've got some food stored in there, you've got your refrigerator, you can keep things cool, you've got sleeping bags, you've got, you know, extra clothing. So something were to happen or you were to get stranded somewhere, uh, you're just not totally, um, you know, on your own, unprepared. So I enjoy that part of it. One of my favorite things is, uh, you know, finding different gadgets and, and emergency supplies and things like that, that uh, just to make everything better, to, you know, to complete the whole kit, you know, to, to be, <laughs> so, so you can uh, be Captain America of anything, such, any situation falls. These guys, everyone asked me about these that last video, what are these things that you have uh, stuck on the side of your van? And these are cool. Uh, so this is a little gadget I want to share with you uh, that I found on Amazon. These are, who makes these? Hokina? Actually, the guy I got them from uh, is, is a subscriber, uh, is a small family business. So I like to help them out when I can. This is not a, a product endorsement. I received no money for this. Uh, I just think that they're super cool. Okay, so what are these things? These things, they come in a three pack. They are emergency road flares, LED road flares with, I don't know, they've got all sorts of modes on them, but they do, they're just so cool uh, because I used to carry flares. Uh, and I think in my, last, my previous emergency road box kit, I included flares and you know what we've come to find is a wildland fire i mean those are dangerous i mean one of those things a car hits them and they roll off the road in the summertime just not an option i mean that's pretty antiquated technology i guess the nice thing about it is you don't have to go back and get them uh, but it's just not worth it big risk so mrs w had a flat tire not too long ago and it was on the side of a busy highway before i could get there she'd pulled over and you know she was really nervous she couldn't get off the shoulder so having something like this even if you could just toss them out is really nice so they come in a three pack and they have all these different modes and they you know you can push them they flash also another thing that we've been doing is when we have folks that are coming up to the place maybe over for dinner or wanting to visit that ha don't know where we live you know we'll put these out like look for the orange flashing lights you know then they can pull right in especially at night uh, so they've got a also have got an led flashlight on them which is kind of cool so if you had to get underneath the rig and work on something or you know you got a rock stuck in your brakes or whatever you you don't carry a flashlight because you're not prepared uh, you can have you can use these as well got a hook on them so you can hang them Anyway, there you go, got your hook going. I don't know when you'd use that, but uh, what I like the most is the magnetic. So they're magnetic, you can stick them on the side, make sure you put them on the right way. And there you go. I just, I think these things are cool. I love having them. I've got uh, two sets, I've got them in both of our vehicles, uh, super cool. So let's see how tough they are. I've got them behind the wheel of the, uh, the one ton transit van. It's pretty heavy. It's got all the stuff in it. It's got a full tank of water. I think this might be asking a little bit much, but we'll find out here soon enough. Oh, we killed one of them. Did I turn it on? I don't remember. <laughs> I think we killed one of them. Oh, good news for Hokina. I pushed, I must have turned the switch off. I pushed on the switch a couple times and they're all going again. All right, let's see what happens when we drop them from a great altitude. So to complete our test, we have to drop the Hokina from a great altitude. And well, limited as I am with my public education, I was trying to put my, my thinking cap on and come up with a, uh, a, a trigger mechanism because we can launch the drone up there to a couple thousand feet, but how do you trigger it to drop? So this is, uh, this is what I came up with. So this is hanging from a piece of uh, monofilament uh, for you south of the Mason-Dixon line. That would be uh, Fission line, or is it east of the, or I don't know. 
I should have prepared. So I've got a, uh, uh, I've got some cannon fuse here. I don't remember how, how long it takes cannon fuse to burn, but I've got two feet on there. The, I guess the most important question is, is will the, will the Phantom even lift this thing? It's kind of heavy. Anyway, so I used impregnable gaffer's tape. I taped the can of fuse on there. So the idea is that will burn up there once we get to a great altitude and melt the monofilament, i.e. fishing line, and it will drop from a great altitude. So <laughs> let's see what happens. I think we're all set. It's highly doubtful that, I, that this is even gonna take off with all of that stuff hanging down below it. I tried to, I tried to balance it, to, well, Let's see, all right. So the idea is I'm gonna launch it, it'll go into hover. I'm gonna use the, use the torch here to launch the, or to light the cannon fuse. There we go. And uh, let's see what happens. Most likely what's gonna happen is I'm gonna end up with a crash drone here. <laughs> all right. Boy, it's, moving around a lot here. <laughs> here, we go. here we go. Oh, it's off. <laughs> oh, it's uh, having trouble. It's having trouble gaining altitude there. Oh, I'm getting all, oh, it's going up now. I'm getting all sorts of warnings. <laughs> Where's it going here? All right, come on back. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> okay, what's our altitude? So we're at um, 60 meters. Trying to keep it overhead. We're at 90 meters. <laughs> it's the little things in life here. All right, we're at 130 meters. Boy, there's no, no limit to what we could test with this uh, state-of-the-art uh, drop system I've got here. We're at uh, 183, 184 meters. It's still climbing, 204. How long is that can of fuse gonna burn? Two, 240? <laughs> 267? Trying to keep it, oh, oh, by the way, there we go, trying to keep it overhead. Oh, there we go, I think it dropped. Did, did it drop? No, it's still, I can still see it swinging. Is it coming down? I can't tell, I think it's coming. No, no, I can still see it swinging there. 370. 390. 400. Still climbing, 440. Four sixty six, four sixty nine. Five hundred. Maximum maximum height reach. Okay, so now we just have to wait for the cannon fuse to burn through. There it goes! <laughs> I see it smoking. Oh, it's going to Where's it going to land, though? When is it going to land? Oh, I, I heard it way over there. Well, I guess it does flash, right? It's flashing. Maybe we can find it. Might have to wait till nighttime. All right, I'm going to bring the drone back. And we'll uh, go over there and see if we can. I heard it. It landed on the other side of the road into the bushes. So I'm not exactly sure where it landed, which is a little strange because the, uh, the Phantom was uh, directly overhead. I could see it. There must have been a lot of wind up there because it took uh, many, many seconds for it to come down. But I was listening and I heard a crunch, you know, something fell right over here at the other side of the road. So we might have to wait till it's dark to find it. But let's go in and see if we can. The good thing is, is it'll be flashing all the acres and acres of pasture out here and it's got to fall in the bushes. All right, keep your eyes open. It's got to be in here somewhere. So I looked for this thing for 15 minutes or so and I couldn't find it. 
The interesting thing is, is when I came back to do the edit, I, I was looking at it in 4K here and I could see exactly where it fell. So you can see it go right down there. Now watch, this is increased by, increased the magnification here by 50%. Look at the little red arrow right there. Now that is the last place uh, that I could actually see it zoomed in. So let me reverse the clip here. So keep your eye on that red arrow. All right, now watch. It's coming up in five, four, three, two, one. Right there, it's going backwards. You see it coming out right through the middle of the screen and right there, there's reverse. Okay, so let's take this thing and let's increase the magnification and come on down and it's falling, falling. Do you got it? Can you track it? I'm tracking it right there. I can still see it, still see it, still see it, still see it. It's coming across and right there is the last place that I could see it land. So I think, look. so we look at Jack's uh, trampoline there. If we go straight due east from that, maybe we can find it. Let's go back out and see what see if we can find it. All right, so Jack and I reviewed the the 4K footage and this we can see the cherry tree right there and right across is this is this the yellow bush right here? I think so. It should be right right behind this because it cleared that it cleared that uh grand fur right there. I wish I had some Is that it right there? What? It's orange and it should be flashing. Oh, I thought it was, it was like that looks like that is been all through here. So I, I saw this bush, it was behind and to the left. Yeah. What if it was in Well, I, I, here it is. <laughs> How come I couldn't see that? I walked through here several times and it's still working. Nice. How <laughs> high did you drop it from? 500 meters. Oh, what's that in? I have no idea. Super high. How what, about like that? That, yard, that was, I can't believe it. It was sitting right, I mean, I walked by here so many times, I was afraid I was going to have to wait till dark. I mean, it was right off the road. And uh, did you see it? You spotted, spotted it, right? Or was it me? It was you. You found it. I just kind of came out here and got brambles in my shoes. Well, there we go. It is super tough. <laughs> it is really tough. Look at how beat up that the tape is well, that's from the cannon fuse that went through there ah. i couldn't figure out how to drop it so i uh you know, i put the monofilament on there and then taped three foot of cannon fuse on it and then the cannon fuse burn up and then melted the monofilament and it fell down mm. all that, right well that was fun yeah huh. i didn't really do anything but gonna get all the whinging about this is not homesteading well go sit on your head we gotta have some fun once in a while right mm-hmm